Good morning. My name is Karen Clymer. I'm with the Elgin First Assembly of God, Elgin, Oklahoma. We did record last night, tried, and it would go off and on so two different times. Told me that it did not record, and yet this morning when I got up, I saw that some had recorded. So we're going to try to do the whole lesson. We'll do as quickly as we can. So as we said, 921 Third Street, Elgin, Oklahoma. Sunday school begins at 945, and there are classes for all ages. We're going to I'm not going to just speed through this, but we will do away with some of it we, that we normally do, trying to go ahead and get this done. But our central truth is this. God works sovereignly in our lives through all circumstances. Even the storms of life that come, God is still there. And I like the word, and I read about this word one time that's such a key word, nevertheless. It's a big, long word, but nevertheless, or it means however, or in spite of, God still works. He is not thwarted by things that Satan does. He is greater. So we look, give ourselves to him today to put our faith, trust, and confidence in him. Naomi, bereaved and blessed. Think, wow, how this is quite a lesson. We appreciate it and how that, you know, the prophecies that God makes from years and years past, I mean, sometimes, in fact, not just hundreds, but thousands of years, they still do come to pass. So we're going to talk about this uh, lady, Ruth, um, and her husband there that she had lived in uh, with her husband there in, or, or pardon me, Naomi, and Naomi, where she was, at his living, how that they, she and her husband, her and her boys, but and their land faced a, a horrible, a horrible crisis when you had uh, the crops wouldn't wouldn't have failed and everything was was horrible. It was just a, a great time of just for nobody could could get anything done because of of the weather. It was a time of just hor horribleness when nothing could could grow. So as they had left, they would go to another place. They decided they would go to a place called the, to Moab. And as they went to Moab, they was there. And this is, you have to think about the time that these people were living in. It was very difficult times at, in, because it was during the judges. And people did mostly just whatever they wanted to do, whatever was right in their own sight. And so well, here they were now. Where they, had, they had served the Lord. They were cleaving to the Lord. Now they were in a foreign country. You go there, and they had to learn the customs and all. You think of what that was like. And on top of this, then like I said, we're going to try to speed through this. But what happened, how that uh, her husband died and her, her sons, they had married. And now those boys had died. So it was a very terrible time for, for Ruth. And said, and our, I'll just suit our, uh, our key verse. The women of the town said to Naomi, Praise the Lord who has now provided a redeemer for your family. May this child be famous in Israel. Now we see there's, there's a, we've got good things coming here. But they had to go through some really difficult times here. And Naomi, when she got word, word had finally come to her and word had spread that way. I'm sure it was just word of mouth. They would have uh, carriers that would just take to have a message and they would run and get these messages out. So it took maybe a long time for her to get the message. But they did find out that the, they had, it was time now that they could go back, that now that it, they, they the horrible time was over with. It was an awful cycle that they had gone through, but now they could go back. The crops were beginning to grow again, and the famine was was gone. Thankfully, that was gone. So as she wanted to get back to uh, to her family, and so she told her girls, she said, I'm leaving, but the girls left out, and they said, with her. They said, we're going with you. And she said, no, you, it's best for you to stay here. So it's a foreign land for you. You can stay here. But and one of the girls, one of her, her daughter-in-law's, Orpah said she, she would finally go back. But it was Ruth that said, no, I will not go back. Said, wherever you go, I will go. I'm going to be here with you. It's going to be hard. She would tell her it's a, another country. You're going to have to learn different customs and all. And the laws are different. Everything has changed. But this woman would not be dissuaded. She said, I will go with you. It was like, nevertheless, in spite of, however, uh, some way, I'm going, to, I'm going to make it. I believe that she had known. And now we see like Naomi is very depressed. She's sad. All three of these women have just have been widowed. They're, it's a horrible time for them. They're all suffering. But Naomi and the better times when her husband was living, her sons were living, everything was going well with her. And she, they'd still clung to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They were trusting in God. This was a time for them that she had, that time she had really put her trust in God. And now she was going through this time and it felt like to her, it seemed like, you know, life in the scenes, it seemed like God had forsaken them. But somehow, Ruth and, and, and Orpah, they had seen the time when she had put her faith and trust in God. And there was somebody here, something about this, that Ruth thought, I want to know this God. That's what I really believe, what she was thinking. So as she had gone back, and 
it was a trip that from what we understand could have been seven to ten days and there they were walking it was a very a difficult time for them but yet that when they made it back and the people just greeted her they were so excited to see her back and all and so said oh Naomi Naomi and she said well don't call me Naomi she said you know because that means pleasant but she said you have to I insist that you call me Mara it's bitter and she felt like that God had maybe just left her that's the way it seems sometimes that her lament acknowledged her that it's the grief she was going through but somehow in the back of her mind probably there was this clinging to God that had been so faithful but when you're going through a grief time like this it's usually best that we don't make a lot of decisions and all because it is very difficult let's say right now we need to reach out and be a appreciative and be for what people are going through as far as having a concern for them people that are going through grief at this time like a widow or whether it's a widow or a widower but some of the the processes and things they have to go through and after a death it is unbelievable some of the the pressures and things that they go through besides the loss of, of the loved one because of, of the different laws and things that they and things that they go through that I've seen like my sister and then I had a cousin that went through things that that they would face because it was in both of their names, she, their, their, their name and their husband's name. And laws are different if you go from one state to another. And so there can get to be some really difficult times. So that, it helps us to see that we need to be patient and kind. And this is what Ruth, to me, showed that she had great patience. She's a very, very patient person. And she had seen her mother-in-law in the good times. So what they did together, she, as they went back, and Orpah had gone back, but she still loved that mother-in-law, and no doubt they had ways of, of carrying letters, getting back. But a providence in, in Naomi's life. She At this time, she couldn't see that there was providence. But God did have a plan. Our lesson here in part two is providence in Naomi's life. The first part was affliction of Naomi, the sorrow at every turn. And now we get, because things are getting better, providence in Naomi's life. God provides for his children. God had not forgotten her. He had his eye upon this woman. He's providing for her. I, I, I like here how our writer brings out about the ways we've seen God provide for Naomi up to this point in her story. He caused the famine to end in Bethlehem, and he made sure Naomi heard the news. And third, he cared for her through the steadfast love of Ruth. Four, he protected her on the journey to Bethlehem. Five, he timed their journey so they would arrive in late spring at the beginning of the barley harvest. Look at this, how God is providing. Six, his law provide, provided the means for Ruth to support them both by gleaning in the field. Seven, he led Ruth to the field of Boaz, very special, one of Naomi's family members who was a respected man of wealth, faith, and integrity. So we see on and on as we start reading this part of our lesson, we'll see God continue to provide for his children. So in Ruth chapter 2, it describes how Ruth found herself seemingly led by God uh, in a place where she would be looked after and generously provided for, for Boaz. Boaz uh, for, for her for Bo Boaz recognized Ruth's character and her hard work as she set out to work and and she was going to find something to do and no doubt Naomi had given her maybe a crash course in in the culture and and the laws and and things that she could expect but this girl was headed out or not just a girl but this woman had she had work to do she needed to work because in that time that the, the women really they were dependent on a man that's the way their culture was that it was very difficult for them i'm going to tell you something that the lord had done had made provision for them then in god's law it instructed landowners not to harvest to the edges of the field why because god cares for those he, for the poor they would leave the grain for the poor and this is from leviticus 19 9 and 10 and then also 23 and 22. so when ruth explained where she had gleaned so much grain as naomi was amazed at what this she said well um, told that I, I was in this man named, named Boaz. So Naomi blessed Boaz and praised God for the kindness he had shown. Naomi, Naomi began to see there were some good things happening. It, she thought it would never be good again. That was it. it looked like never, never would it be good again. Life could never have anything good. But this, how God was working, thing was a wonderful thing. She came in and said, where did you glean? She said, well, it's a field. His, na uh, his name was Boaz. She said, oh, uh, he's well Boaz that's one of Elimelech's close relatives he's one of our family redeemers oh this was highly important 
In ancient Israel, kinsmen redeemers were relatives who had certain duties to the family. And one of the things was one of the primary duties was redeeming a family property that had been lost through death or poverty or poverty. And family members had sold it or maybe had sold themselves into slavery when they'd gotten in really bad ways. But so uh, here he is now has it. God is has blessed here. A writer says it is also believed that a redeemer could preserve the lineage of a male relative who had died without children by marrying his widow and fathering a child. So here this was a, a this 